All right, Father, we thank you for this night. We thank you, Father God, for the opportunity to study your word once again. Lord. We thank you that you brought us back together. And we pray that once again, Lord, you will impart yourself to each of us. Let us share, Father God, that impartation during this time as we study your word, Father God. We ask that you reveal to us what we need to know, Father God. And just let us, Father God, see even the most minute detail of what we discussed tonight that applies to each of us, Lord. And Lord, if there's anything that we have mastered, Father God, continue to reveal that to us, Father God, that we will once again, Father God, just receive you and Lord, just be more aware, get deeper revelation of who you are and who we are in you, Father God, that we may impart that revelation to others, Father God, as we receive it in Jesus' name, amen. All right, you may unmute. Well, tonight, if you don't know, we're going to be transitioning to the book of, of James. Uh, those of you who have been around a while, we did look at this the Bible study before. I want to think it was about five years ago or so, but uh, it's, it's always good to revisit. And actually, KCM started, according to Elder Stanley, he remembers better than I do, actually said the first sermon that was preached here came from the book of James. So uh, that was good. But before we start, I just want to thank everybody for all the wonderful support. Thank Iman. I know he reluctantly didn't want me to do that. That's why I waited to the end for that uh, outstanding outline that he gave us and how much revelation I know I got. And I appreciate everything everyone else contributed because it, it actually, uh, to me, it's like it turbocharged me. I got revelation that wasn't in the outline. And I didn't get the records. So, uh, we don't take like your participation is very, very valuable. Not doing that to manipulate you, but we need to understand that not one of us has all of it. So we need one another. So I uh, want to encourage everybody to continue to uh, participate to whatever degree that uh, the Holy Spirit leads you to. Okay, we're looking at the book of James. Uh, one last announcement for those that don't know, uh, all for the real, you no. Know, from now on, the uh, <laughs> Bible study outline will be posted on the website. Okay. okay. Even, even when we, uh, what point we back of the building, whenever this, but no matter what, uh, that will always be a continuous. We'll get back to the books when we gather in person, but we will also keep it on the website too, because not everybody that, uh, goes on to our zoom is here physically in Fayetteville and it can make it more accessible. So it will be there for, for right now. That's the only way you can get the outline is off the website. All right. Any questions about that? Okay. Do we no. have one for tonight? Pardon me? Do we it's have one? one? Right. It's there. It's been there a couple of weeks. Okay. Well, yeah. All right. I, I, I was trying to avoid to request that everybody, everybody look at the website. Do you have to actually physically go to the website? <laughs> I'm sorry. You have to go, you go to the website. You'll see it there. And, uh, you can either... Uh, copy it down or print it out. I understand, so KCM, we so anointed, and, but it is, but it, it's sort of small on there. But anyway, you got all of January's on there. And as we go through month two, they will be posted. So the outline is available there. So we are, you know, for those who don't have it yet, we're going through James. Tonight we're gonna to go to James chapter one and the, uh, the four areas here. All right, any questions about that? But you have to go to the website to see the outline. <laughs> Click on the tab that says uh, Bible study. Anybody that's been there? Say something about Bible study. Then you'll see the sheet. All righty. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Now, as we start, I've noticed one thing, and, and one thing for me, I'm trying not to monopolize all the time, but uh, one attitude, I think if we get in the attitude of uh, thinking about the perspective of the lesson, because me personally, and I think the other ministers do the same thing, we just don't have a lesson to do a lesson, okay? We try to uh, first listen to what God wants us to do, but in addition to that, the lesson has to have a purpose or, or, or objective. I think we read the uh, Enemies Playbook, that, that was very clear. That was very, uh, but I would say very high level spiritual things in theology. That was, that, that served an excellent purpose and it was great. 
Now for James, I want to set the tone for James. I look at the book of James, it's more like Christianity or being a disciple uh, 101 at the, the, the sort of an entry level. That doesn't mean it's not important, but you know, it's when we look through there, I would say in the mindset, this is not based on necessarily deep theological principles. Okay, and that doesn't mean it's not su significant because you understand, I thought of the analysis when I was in college, you know, I couldn't take calculus one to I had successfully passed calculus, well, calculus two to you successfully complete calculus one. This is a prerequisite. So one of the things I would keep in mind with, with James, this is my perspective toward it, and you can use it if you want, or, uh, and I see that hand, I'll get that in just a second. Uh, you can use it if you want, but I, I see James is that an opportunity or the dog one or the perspective of it is the manifestation of what we believe. It's not so much what we believe, it's how we express that belief. Uh, yes, I see your hand. So it's Tiffany P. Hey, Pastor Ed. So how are you doing here? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing very well. So I, I was I was on the website um, for the Bible study lesson, um, and the lesson state the verses, but not the books that they're coming from. Oh, oh, it, you're you're right. You're talking down the individual uh, verses. Right. Right. And what I did in my own format, if you look at it a little carefully, I got January 2022, Bible yeah. study lesson, Book of James. So it says verses 2 through 12, but but are we talking it, it's about... It's referring back, and I understand I didn't write it, I'll be more clear, but the entire book is on James, which is written under the title. So we start from the very beginning. So right. it's going to be book one, verse two through 12, when we talk about lesson one, and then oh, lesson two. Right, three. right. Lesson one is chapter one, and that could have been clearer. Okay. I, I, I take that correction. You're right, sis. Just clarifying. I just want to make sure I'm in the right yes. place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're in the right place. Is I could have been more uh, uh, clear in the way I wrote it. <laughs> See, a lot of times I'm guilty of writing things from my perspective because I said I wrote James, and you know, it doesn't automatically translate that. Oh, the first part is the first chapter, and I actually, I, I, you're perfectly right. It doesn't say the first chapter, <laughs> but I understand it's written in my own little format, and I appreciate that correction. I will correct that and, and maybe repost it. But yeah, we're doing chapter one. Everything in lesson one pertains to chapter one, lesson two pertains to chapter two, lesson three, chapter three, lesson four, chapter uh, four, lesson five is chapter five. Okay. But I will okay. rewrite it because, right, if nobody's seen it before it, and it will could lead uh, misinterpretation. Thank you for pointing that out. Okay, thank you. I don't know, no problem. I appreciate that. I, that will be corrected immediately. So tonight we're doing chapter one and the entire chapter. And again, thinking of, of James, because the subtitle in my Schofield is called Practical Christian Living. These are just practical things that we are to do. Because saying I believe something, or anyone said they believe something, but there's no corresponding action to what they believe, it really makes what you believe is insignificant. And y'all know a lot of times I use those sports analogies like, you know, <laughs> say I'm a basketball player, but you know, I, I go, well, you know, I go to the gym. But do you ever dress out? Nope. <laughs> I'm a basketball player though. You got any sneaks? Nope. You know how to dribble? Nope. Know how to shoot? Nope. Know how to play defense? Nope. <laughs> you got no uniform? Nope. You ever get on the court? Nope. I'm always in the gym though. You get the analogy. I'm in the gym. Every time there's a basketball game, I am in the gym. I am a basketball player. But I never hit the court and participate. You never see a manifestation of what I say. So when we think about practical Christian living, uh, you know, the old adage, the action speaks louder than words. The time as a believer, sometimes people need to see what we believe instead of always hear what we believe. Because anybody can say they believe anything. But do we actually do it? All right. That being said, we're going to start and hear somebody else's voice. We'll follow the outline here, my confusing outline, which I'm going to correct immediately. 
uh, we'll look at uh, the testing of faith, verses 1 through 12, uh, 2 through 12. Mm -hmm. I don't know why it's the 1. No, let's read 1 through 12. Whoever's going to read it. I'll read. Yes, thank you. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. No, no, we start with one. Oh, okay. James, yeah, that, bond, James, a bond servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. Greetings, my brothers, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Where do you want me to go to? Uh, 12. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all, all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him, but let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and, and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Let the lowly brother glory in his ex exaltation, mm -hmm. but the rich in his hum humiliation. Because as a flower of the field, he will pass away. For no sooner has the sun risen with a burning heat than with, it withers the grass. Its flower falls and the beautiful appear, appear, appearance perishes. So the rich man also will fade away in his pursuits. Blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Amen. So this is a test of faith, and I wanted to include one in there. I don't know why I left it out. So uh, thanks again. I will revise this outline uh, quickly so the next one will be more concise. So if we look and understand this is a discussion. I don't mind if everybody unmuted, if you're comfortable unmuted. So comment so you won't be talking and not be heard. So if you want to unmute, uh, please do that. But one thing that said it in context, we have to look at James is writing this uh, letter, this epistle to the 12 tribes that are scattered abroad. That means he's not writing to those that are in uh, still in Israel under the Roman occupation there. So that, that's the, the first premise here. And he makes it very specific. And you know, some authors say he's writing it to the 12 tribes. He talked to the believers in the 12, the 12 tribes, but he's not so much writing it to well, it's not, according to this, the introduction is not to the uh, to the heathens. It's to these Hebrews who have been scattered abroad who are the believers. Okay, so we put that in context. So this is not like a salvation letter. This letter is to believers. So if we are believers, then this letter pertains to us. Now, why would he, you know, and it's, I've taught on the other half too. We look at verse two, it says, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. <laughs> now, now, <laughs> I just want to park there a second. So understand Roman occupation has occurred uh, and I don't set the, I didn't research the time here, but the 12, the believers of the 12 tribe of Hebrews have, uh, left that was a great uh the party word exile it was the party of uh what's the word of persecution came so he's writing it to the church and i'm gonna try to use modern vernacular it's been written to the church that's in all these different places <laughs> but he said count it all joy when you fall into various tribes uh trials so what what's the significance of that just think about what those people were going through and what kind of situation they were in. And is there any comments on that? Because he's saying you should count it joyful that you that these people have come invaded our homeland to the point that you it was safer to leave than to stay. Mm -hmm. Why is he trying to encourage them? 
Hmm. Why should they be joyful about these trials? Well, I guess I, I, I thought out. Come on, Pastor Nate. Yeah, I know y'all are about the whole thing. <laughs> one thing is um, they had reference before then um, of Christ, and he encouraged us that we would fall into trials and temptation. Christ told us what would happen, what happened to him, what happened to us. And they were in, and like you said before, they were they were scattered. So this is in the part of the early church as the church was growing, and they weren't around other believers that may believe in what they had been taught um, by Paul or Peter or anyone else. So they were really, you know, just like us now, we have certain belief of you go somewhere and they haven't even heard of Christ. Right. You know, so you're going to expect that, you know, so this is something that they should expect. The reason they were in and actually it came from Christ, that he said this will happen. And, you know, you're, it's the early part of church is really being built here at the time. So this is apparent that you're going to you're going to have these issues with people. Right. Like the, the word is being spread. Perfectly. Yeah. You hit the key. I don't know if anybody else wants to see another hand. We have to think about the word is being spread. A lot of times, I don't think we think of the context. We think about the negative. See, the believers have been scattered to other places. Mm -hmm. But he's telling them, and I'm looking, trying to keep the perspective of James, as I see it, and hope, I don't know if other, the perspective, uh, the perspective of James, that even though you're in this uncomfortable trying situation, you should be joyful because you are there to represent Christ. Mm -hmm. So who wants to see a whiny Christian? You say you believe, but every time you're around them, they, you know, they like bring you down or they're not showing that joy of the Lord. And I'm not talking about, oh, I'm so happy that he took my own land. No, he's saying you, your attitude should be one of joy because you have become an example. They're not here in Jerusalem. They're not here where the apostles are teaching. I see the hand, I'm going to get over there. So you, you got to be joyful because the people need to see you. You say you believe this, they need to see it. And you don't need to turn it off because you're not where you want to be. Yes, so Tip. <laughs> got that go. Yeah. So so what I was gonna say also is that um he uh what I'm getting from it also is that he's talking about perseverance um and that that kind of has been a word for me for like the last two months is perseverance and testing your faith um in order in order for growth even in the lord you have to be tested in order to grow absolutely so so when i think even as a as a young person you know um and i always relate things to school is you know, you're, you're, you're tested in order to show your knowledge and your wisdom. Um, and in order, I, I, I guess what I'm saying is like, in order for you to, 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 to be able to show that there's got to be some perseverance involved in that. You're not, right. you're not, um, you don't lose hope. You don't lose faith in what it is. You get, you just, get stronger with the perseverance. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I feel like I don't know that that stands out to me. Perseverance is standing out to me really hard in this. Yeah, and, and we are required this just didn't apply then. It applies probably more so today. Well because more of us so it is this is a what they said the on time world uh team Mitchell. I'm not sure which one of you are uh See another yeah. hand raise. That's Tamika. Right. Um, piggyback off of what Tiff is also saying. What I um a key word in it, it says when mine says when troubles come. Um, right. so we know that they're guaranteed, you know, to have trials and tribulations in this life. Um, but mine also says consider it an opportunity. I think right. at times <clears throat> when we view, you know, trouble and trials and anything from the natural standpoint, it's like. We view it in a negative content, but to, <laughs> to get the right perspective in it is viewing it as an opportunity, not saying that it's easy, right. but there's an opportunity for you to profit from that trial or whatever you're going through that testing, right? Which reduces 
right. growth in that. So if, if I think, you know, like it says, I think in Romans where it says all things are working together for your good, right. then you're able to see that even during the trials and tribulations that we go through, the most high is able to use that for us to profit for our good if we keep the right perspective. Oh, absolutely. Elder Jones, I see another hand. Hero. Uh, yes, sir. How are you today? Um, I'm doing well. Just wanted to mention that uh, right from the beginning, James um, talked about the, the uh, 12 tribes that were scattered abroad. And not only that, he proclaimed Christ Jesus from the beginning. Also, right. uh, letting everyone know that he is a bond servant uh, to Christ Jesus. And that anything uh, that we go through now, we should be able to overcome it because we are bond servants also of Christ Jesus. Uh, so he's telling you to count this as joy when you're going through something. And it's not sin that he's right. talking about. He's talking about daily trials right. that we go through each and every day. And since they're scattered, no doubt this is uh, part of the uh, trials that he's encouraging each and every believer out there uh, to go through because at the end, it's going to produce something. Right. And you're absolutely, yes, uh, Iman or Tina? It's Tina. Hey, everybody. Okay. So um, to go along with what Tiff and Tamika was saying about perseverance and growth, um, one of the things from my personal experience is in these last couple of months, um, I never thought about it in perseverance that Tiff said that, but when we think about our job, plus out here still working in the field, when we want to elevate um, to the next level in our jobs, there are some things that we're required to know technical stuff but then it also comes with experience and some of the experiences that we get at this level helps prepare us for the next level so we can take that in the natural realm and the spiritual realm Absolutely. either or so and i would say where we are in the spiritual realm is what's going to manifest in the natural yeah amen and we need that for the days ahead so two, three months down the road, we can look back and be like, y'all, that helped me prepare mm -hmm. for this particular day, for this particular challenge, because I went through this or I experienced this, now I know how to deal with X, Y, and Z. Right. And give us a better witness. And I see a lot of people, okay, Pastor Dave, well, Sister Liz were next, and then yeah, I'm going to go back to Tiffany, and then uh, <laughs> tell me Forgive me for coming back when I, but Not the other day when I first started reading this, it really you know, talking about the, how the church, uh, sorry, how the believers were dispersed. And I thought about, you know, this was early, what I consider church planting. And right. they, how they were dispersed among these different nations. It wasn't about going out. I mean, temples were built there, you know, Jewish and other uh, religions were there, but, you know, the people didn't have an, you didn't go out, and, just, and it's a reference for us today, they didn't go out and take a building and told right. people to come. They went in a community they were dispersed in and they showed the love and the way to live holy, if you want to say the way, you know, the, the about obeying God's commandments and love, showing love to community. And as they drew people into, you know, that community, those people would meet. And that's how the church was built. Yes, now, well, I started church, now just, you're right. Right. And, and this this is really talking about early church planting, too, because it's not about a building. You plant by you planting yourself in a community. You're showing people the love of God. They're growing. The Holy Spirit works. So this was the early, you know, church planting. I was I wrote down in my notes because right. they didn't have you didn't go rent a building back then and say, oh, I'm gonna talk about Christ. No, you had to show a lifestyle such that people would be interested in that it would be drawn to that, and then you explain to them what you were doing. And even today, that's what church planting is all about. It's not just going out and getting a building. Right. It's, you're showing a life, you are the temple, and then people are drawn to you the temple, and then they build. Right. It's always interpersonal relationship. Yes. That, that's God's design. Uh, so, Stephanie, then Chuck and our captain. So, I, I was going to go back to what the, the original question with how do you find joy in trials and tribulations? And we we're talking about 
perseverance and and what and going piggybacking off of what I said and off of what Tina said is that in knowing that you know there's growth that comes behind those trials you should have that challenge should bring you some joy because at, at the end of all of that, you know that there is some growth um, in God that is going to come from that. Um, and in and, and reading back to James 4, it says, let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Right. And if, if, so if you question that, um, is what it's saying to me is, so if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who, who gives generously right. to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. So it, it's saying that during that trial, like you should have joy in that trial and understand that perseverance with perseverance comes growth. And if you can't, you can't grasp it, you, you reach out to God to give you that wisdom so that you can understand the joy that you should have in, in the trial that, that you're experiencing. Right, and you're just hidden where I'm headed. That's good. Uh, Chuck and our cast, Ms. Cast. Yeah, um, it's, 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 it's already kind of been said. Um, Tiffany just kind of went over what I was going to say as well. Um, you know, the, the, as the people were scattered abroad, so they didn't have their, their original... Um, or they weren't in their original land. And so they had to endure with what they had where they were at and needed to understand that uh, keeping the faith is what would get them through their different trials and tribulations. Um, and it kind of reminds me of kind of what we're going through to today. Right. You know, a lot of <laughs> aren't meeting and, but no, nonetheless, you know, we've been taught and we've, we've read the word. So we have to uh, rely on what we, what we know to be true mm -hmm. you know, to bring us through this, this, this trial. Mm -hmm. And absolutely to live the word. And I got to, I guess, as you were being Tina, let me just plug one thing here to try to add to these comments because I appreciate them. But let's go back and look at the whole sequence here. We go back to what Elder John reminded us was. James introduced uh, himself to the church as a bond servant of Christ. And see, it translates, he said, these are to the 12 tribes. So in other words, I'm writing to people that believe what I believe. Okay? Because that's got to be the foundation. But without that, nothing else is going to be successful if we are not operating as a bond servant to Christ. And I'm not saying because you didn't say that specifically, you're not, but if you think about what you're doing, you're basing everything you're doing on the faith you have in Christ. Mm -hmm. But the faith you have in Christ is going to put us in situations where we're going to face trials, various trials and, and tribulations, when we are to display a joy. Now that's not happiness again, like, oh, I'm just, I'm happy I'm being persecuted. No, that joy is a strength to still exude to display what I believe instead of what I'm going through. So that again, it's, a, it's, it's, it's our responsibility to exude what we believe and not what we're going through. The, the world may be miserable. We are not to get miserable, woe is me, because we are bond servants of Christ. This might look like it's bad, but God, Christ got this. So I'm not freaking out because of this. You know, so but we got to understand, that's very important because John, and I, I'm coming, I, I don't know if I said six or about thunder. Because if we don't, the people that we encounter will never see Christ. Mm -hmm. They're like, I'm sad and I'm upset and I'm whining. And oh, yes, I, I know. Now, guess what? No, no witnesses are no effect. Who wants to follow somebody that's whining to? A lot of times you're going to see people going to come up with issues just to get a response from you. And in their spirit, they're looking for something different from the despair that they have. But as believers, if we don't count it all joy, we're going to give them despair too. Oh, well, guess your God is useless too. So my God is useless, your God is useless. So I'm going somewhere else. So, so that's the whole, you know, that's just my take on it. I'm, I, I saw, uh, I don't know if that was Iman, was that you? Tina, did you take, take your hand down? I'm sorry, so I see you, Lauren. I took it down. Oh, you sure? 
Yes, sir. I'm finished. Okay, so Sister Lauren. Uh, oh. <laughs> I love it. Okay, we'll go Sister Lauren. Iman, you're always welcome. Sister Lauren, you got the floor, sis. So I'm going back to um, verse five when it says, if you need wisdom, ask right. our ask our generous God and he will give it to you. And I think it, it, in that, I think it's important that we ask for, for his wisdom as we're going through, because then we won't be that double-minded person trying to figure out how we're supposed to act as we're going through. Okay. Let me throw it at a different perspective where James goes down to through this. He says, to count it out, you okay, knowing that we talked about knowing that the testing of your praise. Now, see, he said, knowing he's not just telling us do things just arbitrarily. See, everything is interconnected mm -hmm. because we're in Christ when the trials and tribulations come. This is why we are to be able to be joyful because we know that these testing and what Tiff and Tina were talking about and others, the testing mm -hmm. of our faith produces patience. Mm -hmm. That patience has this perfect work that we will lack that way may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. So not only should we count it all joy because we're going through these trials and tribulations, we should count it all joy because we need to go through these trials and tribulations. Because as we was talking, the first thing, the first revelation we could should get as to what God, how he relates and how that implies, should be in us. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes that, that believers can be guilty of trying to articulate God and we haven't realized what God means to us. Mm -hmm. And that's the power of that. And I got you again, Iman, I'm coming to you after I read this one. Then it says, let us act, in, if any of provide, if we lack wisdom, uh, let them ask of God who gives liberty without approach. That means, you know, to me, that means if I don't know what to do, I need to ask God what to do. Mm -hmm. I need yes. to be quiet and be still to ask him and get instruction from him. Yeah. Because I, I don't want to mess up everything before that. Yes, he won't. Yes. When I when I read this, I, I think about Job. And uh, sometimes as believers, people can wonder why they're going through certain things. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's the first and second chapter of Job. It gave us a real good picture of what was happening in the spiritual realm before Job went through everything that he went through. Uh, without that, you know, we really wouldn't know that the Most High said, you know, have you considered my soul but Job? Because Job right. was chosen at that time because the Most High thought so highly of him. He knew that, look, you can take everything from him. I bet you he ain't going to deny me. <laughs> yeah. I bet you. And I, was the, I don't want to call it a wager necessarily or an experiment. It's just that the Most High knew that for all the faults that, you know, and for all of his journey that he went through, Job was solid enough not to stray away from the faith in the midst of all his trials and tribulations. So right. for us, we have to also, we have to count it all joy. We can't get into stuck into a pit of despair despite of what's going on, because these things are supposed to be working out like somebody spit, like Tamika said, for our good. But Job, right. I mean, it's a lot, though. Who can, I mean, well, we know Job, so, but yeah. Yeah, it's like you join the army and you start freaking out when you're in battle. I'm like, hold up, they're like, you signed up to be a soldier. Soldier mean you're going to fight. <laughs> now it's time to fight and you freaking out? You fight the wait a minute, you're a believer in me. Well, okay. Uh, Dave or Liz, I'm not sure what you mean. Oh, man. I didn't want to chime in on what Iman said because I put some stuff in my notes here about that same thing and what you said, Pastor, about, you know, it says, but let him ask if we want uh, wisdom, let him ask in faith. Right. And, you know, he was just talking about Job. And I was thinking that, you know, it said, if, but you, if you doubt, you know, and that's all based on your relationship with God. And, you know, just like Job, and, and God knew that relationship with him that he had with Job that he right. could be tried and he would, you know, endure. And we should all have that testimony. But you think about it, if we doubt, and I put it in the uh, the uh, physical term, if I go to you, Pastor, and I say, hey, um, I come to you and I ask you for something. Well, you tell me the right thing to do. And then I walk away and say, you know, I don't believe that. I doubt that. You know, and then I turn around and don't use the wisdom or advice you gave me. I'm not going to get a good result if you told me truth. And right. the same thing with God, it, based on that relationship, do we trust him enough? Because you're not going to say ask in faith. You're asking in faith, but your faith is in God. And if you believe in God, you're going to believe in what he's telling you to do. So, you know, I wrote that down. That's all, you know, if we're wavering, 
it, or it says doubt. Now, doubt right. is not just, I, I don't think he'll do it, but doubt is when you walk away, you say, no, nah, he ain't going to do that. Right. That's doubt. So it's just point blank. I go to you and you tell me, well, Dave, I'm going to meet you at so-and-so. And then wife come home and she said, well, Pastor, ain't going to meet you? I doubt it. That means that I think you're a liar. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, basically, I'm telling her that I think you're lying. Yeah, we do, and that's basically what. And I look, at, you know, we do that to God. We actually either He's true, tell the truth, or God is lying. But that's based on our relationship with Him. Though. Oh, okay. Well, well, based on that principle, then the things of God that I don't do, I either don't know or I don't believe. Yeah, yeah. Because if I know it and don't do it, then. I'm obviously doesn't have any cup any faith in that. So mm -hmm. you know, thank God he don't have any weekend Christians. He don't have part time Christians. We either all, need to be all in or all out. Uh, yes, this is your sets, Pat. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> good evening. But anyway, yeah, Pastor. So um, that's that that's when you guys was talking about um, you know, as as far as the testing of your faith and. And, and, and what John, what James is saying from the very beginning, and I think you hit on it, Pastor, that from the very beginning that he introduced himself and he's speaking to people who are like-minded. Right. Right. And so if, if, if we are believers, and so the, to these people, if we, if we think that way, they were scattered, as you said, from the very beginning, right? But this is not the first scattering. Right. So, so it's not like as though they hadn't been through this before. Do, do you understand what I'm saying? I understand. What so you're saying. they, it, it's not like they hadn't been through this before. So they knew this. So that's why he was able to relate to them and saying, okay, so basically kind of like, you know, when the spirit is kind of reminding you about the things that you've been through. And this is what James is doing right here to the people. Basically just reminding them, at least this is what I'm seeing, that he's reminding them that, hey, when we go through this, you know, that, you know, we're scattered, we're abroad. Some of us are not in our comfort zone and we're going through some trials. Um, don't worry about it. Or you, you're going through, you know, whatever challenges that you're facing right now, don't even worry about it. Because guess who it is that we're serving? We're bond servants. He, right. he says he's a bond servant and he's talking to the tribes that serve the same God that he does. Right. And, 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 and so he, he, he's basically just, it's kind of like, you know, I, I've all, I, I never looked at it that way, but this is just how it's reminding me. It's kind of like, this is an encouragement here for those of us here. John, I mean, James is speaking to the 12 tribes. He's encouraging them that, Although you may be going through something or you know what, you're not at your own home or whatever the situation may be because you're scattered abroad, you know, you're, 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 you're trying to unify with a body of believers, but, but yet every, no one has a steady place or, or whatever is happening at this time. Mm -hmm. but, but he's encouraging them that their, their faith is being tested. Right. You know, you're at a point right now where your faith is being tested. Mm -hmm. The trial is not being tested. It's your faith that's being tested by right. the trial. You know, so you have to be able to stand. And, you know, and so he's giving them the encouragement and saying, hey, stand. And I think somebody was talking about persevering. And the persevering is being able to stand and standing will give you the ability to persevere because this oh, is where patients come in at. Right, and that's what you know, Sister Tiffany mentioned. Yeah, that's what Tiffany and right. Tina was talking about, the persevering, right. like when they're going through their schooling or whatever it is that, you know, is happening. But this is, you know what, I never just, I just saw the spirit just kind of gave, allowed me to see this, that it, it, it's not, you know, I've always looked at it as something, uh, you know, like my, my, my patience is being tried, you know, to, God is saying, oh, let your patience have its perfect work. But my patience is already perfected in God. Yes. And, and, and he's just encouraging me to allow God to be perfect in, you know, through yes. in me. Allow, right. allow God to be perfect in me. You know, yes. just by what he's doing in me, it will give me the perseverance or 
the patience to be able to continue to press through and to go through. Oh, yes, absolutely. Uh, Iman, uh, Tina, one of you. Yeah, yeah just, just a, right. Yes. Uh, and real quickly, I, I appreciate the fact that in verse one, he reminded them that like Miss um, Miss Jones just said, they're not in their homeland. Right. And so they have to resist the temptation to assimilate into where they were. Oh, that's I know the, the, during, the during the time of Christ, they called them, uh, I think the term was Hellenized Jews. But in other words, mm -hmm. they wanted to act like the predominant Greek or Roman society. They were always trying to assimilate. So James was telling them, look, I'm writing to you. Remember that you're scattered. You're not where you are. And when you're tempted to assimilate into this dominant society, when you see the, the, the appeals of where you are, where you've been scattered to, remember your home, remember where you really come from. Right. And like Pastor Lee said, the example that we're supposed to be to other people, not we're not we we're supposed to show them the way, not them following. We're they're supposed to follow us, not the right. way around. Right. At, at least desire to follow us. Right. So we Tina. don't flip the script off because we, I'm at work. Yeah, Tina. Okay. So I'm not holy on Sunday and go out of for a brag when I was in the army on Monday and just cut the food. <laughs> <laughs> we, we're not yeah, allowed to. Yes, uh, um, so Stephanie, I'm going to go to you briefly here. Yes, ma'am. So I, I was looking up the definition of perseverance as we were talking. Um, and the definition says continued and continued. So continued effort to do or achieve something despite difficulties, failure oh, right. or opposition. Um, and then it uses the synonym steadfast. And in steadfast, it says firmly fixed in place. So in saying that, you know, what, what um, Brother Parker was saying with regards to, you know, you know your place and your role with Christ. Um, however, because we're human, and I always hate to say that because we're human, um, we know that we can fall short sometimes. Uh -huh. Um, and therefore, perseverance is a, it's a continued effort. It means that we know where our place is with Christ, but we also know that, you know, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's continued. It's not, it's not something that we always, we always know where we're at when we're in the trial and tribulation. We know that we're in Christ, but sometimes when we're facing that trial and tribulation, um, it's a continued effort. Oh, right, and that's the whole point of this. It doesn't happen automatically. It's not because I'm a believer and this is going on, right? I'm covered. I just don't do anything. I'm on autopilot. Oh, no, it says it is a constant battle. That's why we, the lesson we just had, the enemy's playbook. It, this is never in. You're right. The perseverance is not like a one shot kind of deal. Oh, I persevered this. But guess what? We got to persevere something else. And then we got to persevere something else. You know, I'm 70 years old. I'm still persevering. <laughs> you get to the point like, bring it. I don't need expect peace in, you know, in certain situations, I expect turmoil and opposition. Because only a fool will walk out and say, oh, everything is going to be cool today. God got me and nothing's going to bother me. And I'm just going to go on autopilot. And my day is going to be perfect and nothing to disrupt me or nothing contrary to me is going to happen. That is a foolish person that says that. However, what we should say is bring it on because, and I want to go back to what Elder John pointed out, because I thought of another analogy right quick. I see your hands up, Joe said. When we understand these situations come, James, I'm a bond servant of, life, of, of God. And of the Lord Jesus Christ of the Most High. So I'm a bond servant. You think about in the old, you know, it's, no, it's negative. Think in the old days. The slave did not represent himself. The slave represented the master. So no matter where we go, we represent the master. So these spiritual attacks are not dealing with us personally. They're not aimed at us personally. They're aimed after the master. And because I'm in the Sponsor. Now I got to seek the master because I'm under his authority and his government. Now I'm out here doing this, but I'm acting on behalf of the master. So if you got a problem, when something comes to me, I need to be happy because I don't have to handle this. All I got to do is consult the master for my instruction. Now I understand it's 
it's going to be challenging to deal with because sometimes we get jostled around. We have to deal with things we don't have to deal with. But the thing we need to be okay, joyful. In a way, you think you weak minded fool, you got the audacity to attack the master. You think you attacked me, but you're not because I'm turning this matter over to the master because I do not represent myself. <laughs> you see how it, how it is? Because, uh, and I don't know if there's a hand up. So one of the things for me to add value to this, and y'all, it's hard for me to get away from my TV references, but I saw this episode of Columbo when things were going on, and it was a mafia-related guy that got killed, but the, the guy in Los Angeles, but the uh, the family, the head of the family, mafia family, sent his rep out there to talk to Columbo, and Columbo was talking to him, and, the, and he had the guy was I know I know Elton, I can't resist, but anyway, there was this change that really stuck to me. Colombo asked the dude, said, you think, uh, they have, no, no, no. See, he came, the, the boss had sent him. He told Colombo, no, I don't think anything. I represent these people. I'm just a messenger. I don't think. This is a matter right here. I told you what the people I represent are concerned about. What I think means nothing. And a lot of times when we're dealing with satanic forces, we think that we're going to talk about, you know, we take the root of what I, we put the flesh in there. We need to be like that guy in Colombo, like, nah, this is my own self. I'm on, I'm on behalf of the master. So you need to deal with the master or when we ask for that wisdom, now we respond the way the master tells us to respond. That's the benefit of that. That's why you count it all joy. Just count all joy, because look, in my flesh, I don't even have to helm this. All I have to do is get instructions from the master, the most high. And these trials and tribulations are going to come, but I can still, and as we do that, as Sister Tiffany and Tina were talking about, as we do that, we start to grow and we don't try. Because this guy was adamant. I mean, he, been, he was experienced. He didn't even try to exert his own views in the end of the day. He did not waver from representing the person that sent him. Because <laughs> when you think about it, you bunch servants of Christ, we are we're scattered. Well, that's still within God's will. You know, the master, you know where we are. We don't have to be on this piece of dirt over here to be in the presence of God. We take God with us. Oh, okay. All right. I don't see any other hand, but uh but so this is I didn't understand and recognize this was as powerful as it is, but I think this this will be a stress reliever. <laughs> Instead of fighting things, if you get get in a, a joyful state, that, that comfortable state. But let me read the rest. Because we may just make it through just yes, this portion. Uh, I stopped at five, right? Okay. And Pastor David on this, verse six is, let us act in faith with no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave thrown, uh, like a wave of the sea driven and driven and tossed by the wind. So that means whatever the strongest influence on us, if we doubt, that's what's going to wave influence us. And if you ever been, well, I'm sure all of you have been to the beach or something. I don't know if you've been out on a sailboat. But the sailboat is going to be pushed whichever way the wind is blowing. If it's blowing to the west, it's going to be pushed to the west. If the wind push, coming from the south, it's going to push you to the north. So we, what, what, uh, and Iman talked about that, that temptation to assimilate, that temptation to get in the environment, you start behaving like the people around you that don't believe in the master, don't have the same master that you have. The temptation can't be there. Because we don't get tossed before we walk in with our mind made up. We don't know what to make our mind up. We pause, ask God to make up our mind with the right decision, and we act on that. See, we, we walk in with confidence to know. I think I saw this one situation. Well, I don't know if what I really heard, but uh, this one guy was talking, put in the, in the natural realm, uh, uh, in the natural realm, this guy was starting college, I think, starting as a, a freshman. And the guy asked him, said, uh, you know, something about his education. And the guy spoke out and said, well, I am a doctor. <laughs> he said, but you're a freshman. He said, I'm already a doctor. I just need for what I think was in the state of California. I just need for the state of California to confirm the fact that I'm a doctor. So he went in with the attitude, I'm already a doctor. I got to go through the process to be a doctor. But he was stating what he was going to become before he had become it. Now, as believers, we state because we're turning everything over to the master, to the most high, we're a bond servers. Now we live our life in accordance with what the master has ordained before it comes. So before the event comes, we are already prepared for it because of who we are and whose we are and whose authority we are under. 
Because if not, it's no reason to be under that authority. It's, it, it's useless. So when you get that aware, that's why you, you're able to persevere, as, as Sister Tiffany is talking about, because, okay, my fort is going to be attacked. There's going to be cannons and fire coming against my wall, my lifestyle, and all these things are going to come, but it's going to have no effect. I may get some, hear some loud noises. There may be some booms. I may even get jostled back and forth in situations, but I know what the end result is going to be. <laughs> So that's when you, like Pastor David was talking about, that's where you talk about not doubt. We pray without doubt. We pray just like that guy already said, I am a doctor. I just have to wait for the state of California to recognize me as one. God is going to take care of these situations. I got, I'm going to do this until it manifests because I know it is going to manifest because God said it is. We talked about the double-minded mind. And then in verse 9, and we'll only get to this, but that's okay. So let the lowly brother in his exaltation, but the rich in his humiliation, because of, as a flower in the field, he will pass away. So actually, he's talking about some of the, the class differences that's going on there. Uh, because what, it, what has happened, because of the uh, trials and tribulations, that you will have some people that will be in a position to where they may be lowly as far as the standards. They may not be the rich or the influential, influential ones, but they are going to be glorified by them counting all joy and walking in that patience. So having material things is no guarantee that you're going to have favor. And I know in America that may not go because right now we think, well, that's that's the church. Everybody drive Mercedes and Lexus over there. You got this big church and you know, the pastor drives a role and all of this, and I'm not criticizing any particular person, but we can translate material wealth as a sign of uh, success when it's really not, not in God's eyes. Those are just things God just gives you more things to, to glorify him with. So he's saying the lowly, you're going to see the, the situation where the lowly is going to be exalted and the, and the rich are going to be brought down. Verse 12 said, blessed is the man who endures temptation, but when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. And I would like for one person, we were going to, yeah, we'll close up on this, uh, to John turn, because we're talking about this crown of life is going to go to those who love him, who love him. And I'm sure there's a lot of people in church that they love Jesus. But somebody please turn to John 14. Yeah, read uh, John, the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 15. So we'll know how we obtain this level, this uh, crown of life. What's the qualifications? So Tiffany, that you got it? You're muted, so it's different. <laughs> it's, so it says, if you love me, John 14, chapter 15 says, if you love me, keep my commands. Keep my commands. But you can look at that in reverse. If I don't keep your commands, obviously I don't love you. <laughs> Did you see that? And the whole thing about, about you know, James that we just started to scratch the surface of is reminding us of those practical things that we need to do. And it helps us to relate because God made it, I mean, he makes it simple. To do these things here, this is gonna be the end of it. He's talking about practical things, but as, as James is really talking about, these things are practical, but they still impact eternity. <laughs> and we're gonna get into some more practical things as we go through the rest of, of James that we're gonna see that just because it's practical and you know it's not like high theology and all of this, we can't think it as less because you can, we can see right here in these first few chapters, uh, verses that we read, these things are interconnected that confirms our standing with Christ. It's our standing that we receive this crown and we just went through Revelation for those of you that heard that. And, and you know one thing, that's gonna be the, the evidence. The evidence is not what we say. The evidence is what we do that corresponds to what we say. <clears throat> so again, the evidence is not what we say. The evidence is what we do in correspondence to what we say. So basically, James said, 
if you're a believer, you know you're a bond servant of the Most High and of his son, the anointed Christ. These are our guidelines. These are our operating structures. In the armor, we just have to think about standard operating procedures. I know in the, in the uh, civilian world, they, they do basically the same thing, but they may call it something different. I'm sure they have heard, hear the word protocols. These are things you do. And it's not, if you're going to be in this environment, if you're going to be part of this organization, this is the protocols right here that we adhere to. You can't go making up your own stuff. You, know, you can, but you're not going to be a part of this organization. You're going to make up your own rules. You got to bounce and go somewhere else. So we got to understand that James is really right now giving us a clear, to me, definition of what it believe, what it means to be a true believer. And it's interesting that he would start off with, you know, write it to these folks. But no, he didn't write it. He was in Jerusalem. He didn't write it to the folks there. But I want that's a whole nother thing. I'm sure the deal told you, Lord. I think Pastor Dave hit on that really too. That these people in the example where they need to have an impact. And it wasn't all that formality and, and everything. It started person to person. We had to be the church. The early believers had to actually believe, be a manifestation of the word of God. Okay, I've, you're right, Sister Monique. I do turn everything into preaching. <laughs> But it really is, this is practical, especially now, because there's so many play on words and things are getting, trying to be redefined. And if we don't know the order, I mean, we were not, not gonna lose it, but we would endure emotional stress that God wouldn't want us to ensure because we don't have that assurance in him. One thing I think was by the time we finish James, we have more assurance in, in what we do in the play by play of what, how I can confirm my believership. We don't do it to impress people, but as we were talking before, when we first started out, that counted our joy. Everything we had to do that when that situation started, the first thing it got to do is give us, I think we hit on that, us confirmation. Because all of us have got to whatever level resist. And I know people have known you for a while, you've gone through that level of success. I am convinced you made up your mind at some point and you decided you were going to achieve what you were going to achieve and you just weren't going to accept anything else. And you didn't. But guess what? We do the same thing toward God. God is God. Christ is the anointed Messiah. I am a bond servant. And we just stay in that vein. And you know what that does? That should give us some peace and some comfort and some joy because now I don't have to try to be saved. <laughs> We can just be saved. <laughs> See, it's a big difference. Like Sister Josette was saying, we're not these trials and tribulations right now. It's really what's being tested is our faith. And we need to do that because we need to know how much faith we have. Not that God doubts us. We can doubt ourselves. And sometimes we are not, uh, we put in situations where we are stronger and more capable of things than we think we are. But until we are put to the test, we are totally unaware. See the significance of the trials and tribulations. Yes, baby, I'll let, we'll let you close out with the last comment. You got to unmute. Yeah. I just wanted to say, can everybody hear me? I just wanted to say that when, when James was writing this to the tribes, 12 tribes of Israel, he was I believe this is what I take on that. He, he, he's given instruction. He's given instructions to the people that what we have to do. We got, I think we got a teaching on that before. We have to be that example on what the Most High is telling us to be, that they can be one unto him and not us. So when I look at even the whole uh, book of James, I see instructions to his brethren that he was writing, which was the 12 tribes that, listen, you're going to have temptations, but count it all joy, but you got to have faith, you know, you got to endure, verse four. I mean, everything there is given to us as a, 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 an instruction, you know, but count it all joy, and I'm not going to get into chapter two, but these are instructions that we as the believer must follow. Oh, okay. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, we got to where did we get to? 12. We will pick up at 12 next Wednesday and see where, how we're going to, how and where we're going to go. So I'm going to pray and then we're going to close out.
and we can fellowship a lot, like five minutes after that. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Father God, for the reassurance of who we are in you, Father God, and thank you, Lord, for just giving us these basic, clear, and concise instructions, Father God, that allow us to know, Father God, what your expectations of us and how we can manifest you here on this earth, Father God. And how, Father God, even if we're in doubt, Father God, we can freely seek you and you will provide us, Father God, the guidance, the information, the directions. You will impart your wisdom to us, Father God, that we may walk in you and continue to glorify you. I pray your blessings over all in attendance now, the entire KCM family, Father God, no matter where we are, continue to knit us together with your love, your peace, and your joy. Be, Father God, that unseen force that knits us together right now. And I ask that you will be glorified in each of our lives, each and every day, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen.